the exact same thing as the Microsoft Office applications, only they're free because they're open source. And we're going to be using OpenOffice.org. For those of you who've never heard of it, go to OpenOffice.org. And if you're using Windows, you could download the installer. If you're using Linux, you, I'm sure there's an installer you can download as well, but you'd be better off getting it from your package manager for your distribution. And you just click, I want to download OpenOffice.org, and you would download an entire Office suite that is just like Microsoft Office, only free to use, which beats $400. There are some limitations to what OpenOffice.org can do because they use open standards when they're developing it and so some of the features that Microsoft Office does aren't implemented through open standards and now also I want to point out that I am not an expert at Office applications I know enough about them to get myself in trouble but I have a lot of people I know who don't know anything about computers to begin with and so this will at least help those of you who do not know how to use office applications and it'll help you become familiar with them but anyway uh, certain features like uh, for example integrating images into your word documents last I checked which is quite a quite a while ago you, you couldn't do that with openoffice.org but everything else you can do and it has a word document processor and where am I here and it also has a spreadsheet processor it also has a PowerPoint presentation uh, developer whatever you want to call it and a database uh, application but I'm not going to be covering them in this tutorial because they are beyond the scope of this actually the PowerPoint presentation is not but I will cover it in its own tutorial this one I'm not going to cover the spreadsheet either uh, open office calc it's called calc because spreadsheets are made to do calculations but it's actually the same thing as Microsoft Excel it does functions and everything else it's pretty much you know for finances and things of that nature and open office writer is the same thing as Microsoft Word as you can see it looks almost the same when you open it now I might have changed some of the default layout I tried to put it back to normal as close as I can for the so that I could walk you through how to customize some of it and again like I said I am not an office pro when it comes to these uh, types of applications I know my way around them and that's about it so there's gonna be a lot of things that you can do with these that I will not cover because either a, it goes beyond the scope of new users, and it would be something for a later time and a later tutorial, or B, I don't know. Um, but for now, we'll stick to the basic document creation and, and text formatting options. And again, you can find this video, and you're, if you're watching this video, you're, you're probably already on linuxintro.com. If not, you're probably on YouTube, or you're someone who I burnt these to DVD for. Anyway, linuxintro.com, you pick a category you want to learn about. Again, it does not have to be directly Linux related. You can be using Microsoft Office on Windows, Vista, or XP and still watch some of these videos and learn how to do a lot of things. For example, setting up an Apache server or an FTP server or going and learning how to use Office software or Internet applications. linuxintro.com is not limited to Linux learning. It's pretty much just any kind of software that can be used on Linux which a lot of them can be also used on Windows anyway alright first thing we're going to do is get rid of unnecessary buttons now the definition of unnecessary will vary depending on your needs and the kind of purpose you're going to uh, be using your text documents for but what you could do right here on the end of the button row you can click this little down arrow and it will give you options it'll give you any options that have scrolled off and there's no more room for and then below that it'll give you other options for example as you see the last thing you hear you see here is text highlighting well if you maximize it even bigger the last thing you see is background color and now that's not an option here so it covers things that the toolbar doesn't have room to show and it gives you further options 
in this one we're only going to be concerned with visible buttons we're not going to be concerned with customizing our toolbar or locking it or closing it we're just going to be concerned with getting rid of the buttons we don't need styles and formatting is going to be the first one I have never used this I don't I couldn't even tell you what it's for to be honest I'm sure it has something to do with templates but anyway deselect it and as you see to the left here it'll get rid of it this is especially helpful if you're using a laptop or a small display and then again the next one would be apply style I have never used that and I believe that's related to templates anyway and the things we will need to keep <clears throat> And again, like I said, I don't remember what things I've already gotten rid of, so I will know. I will tell you that the things you do, you probably should keep because you will probably be regularly using, is the font type or font face or font name, whatever you want to call this option. Everybody's got their own uh, word for it. Font size, font weight which actually it's just called bold it's either bold or it's not but I call it font weight because I'm a web developer uh, font style italic font style underline left justify or as the tooltip here says left align left al and then centered align right and justify technically speaking this is left justified centered right justified and then justified and then your line spacing options. I only use uh, line spacing one, one and a half, and two. Anything bigger than two is ridiculous. Your numbering lists, numbered lists rather, your bulleted lists, and your indent, decrease or increase. Then font color. I leave it there just because it. I don't really need any more room, so I don't get rid of no more buttons. But you never really need font color. You get a little eccentric with that. Your documents will look like crap. It's better to leave them black and white. Highlighting, you never really need it either. And background color, it, you'd be stupid to use it. You're wasting printer ink. Yeah, oh, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure it has some kind of useful applications. All right, so for our document, the only time, the only kind of thing I could think of to use it as, as an example would be a court motion. And I know it sounds like a strange example, but that would take advantage of several different formatting options and give me an, an opportunity to show you how to use them. So for you know a letter you type to your granny is not going to use very many options. So we're going to cover some of the more common options or some of the more versatile documents like court documents. And because there are several rules to court documents that require different types of formatting. All right, anyway, the first thing you need is your heading now by default in a lot of text uh, word processors the default font is a serif type font a serif type font is a font that let's type a word and I'll show you all right a serif font is a font that has little things sticking out of it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I, I'm not big into terminology, um, even though it's it, font, face, and uh, types are very important in web development and in Word document uh, creation. But as you see here in the upper spindle, whatever you call this, the, the razor of the L, there's a little tick to the left and right of it. And they, they were originally created to help clarify what that letter is. For example, if you've got a, a lowercase l and then an uppercase i, a lot of times they look very similar. But in a serif font, 